we love you, and we pray for your help and intercession in every aspect of our life. Bring us closer to you, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and use oxygen. Oxygen right here has two energy shells. It's in period two, so it has two energy shells. So this is our oxygen atom. We have two energy shells. Atomic number of eight, so if we have eight protons, and put that in there. Eight protons. If we have eight protons, then we know that we have to have eight electrons. First shell is filled with two, and then we fill the next shell up to eight. But we already have two, so we need a total of eight. I said a total of eight. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have a total of eight electrons because we have a total of eight protons. But now, how many do we have on the outer shell? We have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can determine this by taking a look at the group number here. Is 16. You can just take a look at the last number of 1 and 6, which is 6, and that's going to tell you how many electrons are on the outer shell. Or you can take 16 minus 10 equals 6 electrons on outer shell. Let's do our, oh, we have to go ahead and calculate the number of neutrons. We have 15.9, round that to 16. 16 minus 8 is 8 neutrons. Now to do our formula, we have negative 8 electrons plus positive 8 protons equals zero net charge. All right, this is the oxygen atom and it is it has 8 protons, 8 neutrons and 8 electrons. Uh, the number of protons and electrons is the same. You can see our formula at the bottom, negative 8e plus positive 8p equals a zero net charge. Same amount of electrons as protons. In the center there, you will see the nucleus. And let's zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, you'll see the nucleus there. And there is eight protons represented in red. And there are eight neutrons represented in blue. And we got that from... Eight <laughs> neutrons represented in blue. And please keep in mind that is a nucleus. The nucleus does not really look like this. It is going to be all combined, and that's what I'm going to be doing right now and combining those, and it's going to be making kind of sort of kind of sort of a sphere like sort of structure. So nucleus is in the center of the atom. And you can see here, we just go ahead and we can start to put these uh, together. You can't have too many positives right next to each other, otherwise they will start to repel each other. So we kind of build a, a red, then a, a blue, a proton, then a neutron, uh, that sort of a structure. And they're moving all around trying to get into equilibrium and trying to get balanced. And it's a constant thing. They are dynamic. They are moving. And we're trying to get a nice structure here, 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 and Let's go here and kind of squish it together a little bit. There you go. You have your nucleus. Please keep in mind there is no way that this is to scale. It's not even close. Uh, the uh, nucleus is really small in comparison to the whole electron cloud. I won't be able to fit it out here, actually. So this is just a model, Bohr model. You can see here we have two electrons in the center shell and then we have six on the outer for a total of eight 
you can see that big uh, red, that bluish uh, blob there in the center. I didn't do too good of a job of getting them equally distributed. Sorry about that. There you go. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. And there's the nucleus. Kind of, sort of. So, the nucleus is a big old mass, huge mass of uh, protons and neutrons in the center and it takes up the vast majority of the mass of the atom. We, as a matter of fact, electrons have s uh, such a low mass, we don't even put them into the atomic mass. So, that is how, how uh, little they have, little mass they have. The weird thing is a lot of them take up a lot of space. So that's a pretty interesting thing. So they're less dense. The nucleus, very dense, very compact. Your oxygen atom, 